prior to the outbreak of COVID-19, an estimated one in five New Yorkers struggled with mental health issues, which has only been exacerbated by the pandemic. With widespread vaccination projected to begin by spring or summer, people are facing many more months of restrictions and isolation as this dark winter approaches. Mental health used to be swept under the rug. It used to be a second-class citizen of health care. It can't be anymore. It needs to be front and center. Coronavirus crisis will actually be more lasting in its mental health implications than its physical health implications, and we've got to do something about that now. There are over 33,000 young people dealing with trauma and homelessness in New York City. Covenant House New York has ramped up its operations throughout the pandemic to provide round-the-clock support, shelter, and nutrition to the city's youth in need. We were seeing a lot of young people who understandably were scared and anxious and feeling, you know, more hopeless and more depressed. We started offering telehealth therapy sessions. What we've learned is that most of our young people prefer in-person therapy. We reconfigured large spaces so that we can sit with them safely, six feet apart and with masks on. The Hazelden Betty Ford Clinic supports those suffering from substance misuse and relapse, which have spiked during the pandemic. We do have, I would say, more relapses than before. People are dreading the change of season, are dreading the prolonged isolation, not being able to socialize. Has the stigma affected your population any more because of the pandemic and the isolation? Shame and stigma really have been the silent killer for behavioral health conditions. We are now able to provide virtual services for people who don't reside in the city. Over 50% of our clients stated that they would actually continue virtual services. Dr. Emmanuel Fombu is on the forefront of the movement for better mental and physical health care through technology innovation. What are some innovations and methods you see in a post-pandemic world? Even pre-COVID, right? We all had all these conditions that existed. Not everyone had access to care. And COVID has just exposed that side of the world. And I've made it a goal of mine to make sure we create awareness around mental health. There's no one solution for everything. We need to have a holistic approach to any disease, especially mental health. You could have the drug, but peer support could be important to you at the right place at the right time. Maybe the drug is important for you in the morning. Maybe in the afternoon, it might be a chat with a peer. So it's the idea of having this personalized approach to medicine driven by data so we could make more informed decisions at the right time. A citywide initiative was launched by Mayor de Blasio's wife, First Lady Sherlane McRae, to facilitate round-the-clock mental health resources. What Sherlane did with Thrive was make mental health available to everyone, starting with a hotline that anyone could call 24-7 and get support and get help. That's something that could be achieved anywhere in America, including in rural areas that need it the most where there may not be health care nearby. As a country, we need to think about integrating mental health care with our primary care. Stigma is our biggest problem. No matter who I talk to, it's the first issue that comes up. We're not built to hold on to all of these emotions by ourselves. We need others. And that's why this pandemic has been so difficult. The isolation um, is a kind of punishment for us. We can prevent crises. We don't want people to get to the point where they feel like there's nowhere to turn, there's nothing that they can do, and, and they feel driven to take their own life or to use um, heavy drugs. We don't want people to reach that stage. There's always hope and there's always help. We just have to reach out. That's the first step to getting out of the sorrow, out of the sadness, out of the pain that we're in. And Dr. Dave Campbell joins us now live. Good morning, Dave. We just heard from the First Lady of New York City talking about uh, drug abuse and overdoses. We know those have spiked in the 10 months. How does that factor into this story about mental health? Willie, uh, thanks for having me on. It, it overlaps tremendously. What we've seen during the pandemic nationwide, not just in New York City, is that there's been a surge in overdose cases, new cases. Take Indiana, for example. They had 80% increased number of emergency department visits, and that was only in the spring before this winter surge. They had a 30% increase in overdose deaths. Factor in now the surge we're in, the increasing numbers of uh, cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. And you can imagine how we're going to see this continuing overlap of increasing mental health problems with increasing drug and alcohol misuse, increasing amounts of alcohol being consumed, drugs being used. 
And really the, the silent killer, as was mentioned, is this shame and stigma that follows. It, it, people don't sit around the kitchen table and talk about their, their alcohol problem or their drug problem. It is a very quiet, silent killer that is not in the mainstream uh, view, even now. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.